At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce the president of Gateway Technical College, Dr. Brian Albrecht. Thank you, AJ. I tell you, when we came down the aisle, the smiles on the faces of all of our friends and family in the audience is certainly inspirational, and I know that our graduates are smiling just as big today, so we're very proud to uh, welcome all of you here to Indian Trail and to Gateway Technical College's commencement ceremonies. I want to add my welcome to each of you this evening, and this certainly is an exciting night uh, for you, our graduates, and certainly has been a great journey for your success being here this evening. So on behalf of the Gateway Technical College Board of Trustees, the administration, the faculty, the staff, we congratulate you, graduating class of 2014. And a very special welcome to your family and friends who are here to honor your accomplishments this evening. Of course, this evening marks an accumulation of years of personal commitment of reaching your educational goals. Tonight, we also want to thank the many faculty, the professional staff, the academic advisors, the counselors, and the administrators at Gateway who have assisted you along the way. Thank you. And graduates, where would we be without the support of your family and friends who've been with you throughout this challenging yet rewarding time in your life? Please join me in thanking everyone in the audience tonight for their support. I know how excited each of you must feel. We are very proud for you accomplishing your goals in the pursuit of passion leading toward tonight, your commencement ceremony. To help us celebrate and honor your accomplishments tonight are our guest speakers. Please welcome our guest this evening, our commencement speaker, Mr. Thomas Bueller. <laughs> Sina Haywood, Executive Vice President and Provost of Gateway Technical College and the trustees for the Gateway Board of Directors, Bill Duncan, Vice Chairperson, Susan Greenfield, Secretary, Ron Frederick, Treasurer, and trustees Ron Batia, Beth Ormsteth, Scott Pierce, Roger Zacharias, and Pamela Zenner-Richards. Thank you all for your service to our college and our community values, your leadership. Please join me in welcoming Bill Duncan, Vice Chair of the Gateway Board, to introduce our commencement speaker. Bill? It is my great pleasure to introduce Thomas Bueller. Tom Bueller has served for five years as the Director of Business Development at Butterbuds Incorporated, a Racine based company. And industry leader in natural concentrated flavors. Tom joined Butterbuds in 1991, serving as its first international marketing director, a position he held for 18 years. At the time he began, the company which was started by his father, Alan C. Bueller, was, he was 12 years old. Uh, prior to joining the Butterbuds Incorporated, Tom served in the Foreign Service under U.S. Department of Agriculture and spent three years promoting U.S. food and agriculture products in Bangkok, Thailand. Tom earned a bachelor's degree in journalism in 1981 from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and a master's degree in agricultural economics in 1984, also from UW-Madison. Tom serves on the Leadership Council for Schools of Hope, a United Way program dedicated to increasing the reading proficiency of first, second, and third graders in Racine's public schools. He also serves on the Executive Committee of Food and Beverage Wisconsin and participates in the CEO Roundtable sponsored by the Racine Economic Development Corporation. Tom lives with his wife Marcia in Caledonia and is the father of four children aged 15 to 22 and has one dog, Tintin. Uh, he runs Butterbud's operations with his brothers Bill, the general manager, and John, the international marketing director. All three endeavor to carry on the legacy of their father, the company's founder, Alan C. Bueller. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Bueller. Mr. President, district board members, vice presidents, deans, faculty, guests, and most importantly, the 2014 graduates of Gateway Technical College. 
Go ahead, give yourselves one more round of applause. You certainly deserve it. It is with great pleasure that I address you tonight. I can understand you're anxious to grab your hard-earned sheepskin and get the party started, so I won't go on too long. Just think of this as your last lecture and see if there's something that you can't take from it. For my part, I have found great value in preparing this address. A famous author once said, writing a novel is the best way to make sure your refrigerator gets cleaned. Well, I can say I must have the cleanest refrigerator in my neighborhood. Not only that, I was the first to get my Christmas lights put up, and I've raked my yard of leaves three times. So there are many benefits to being asked to prepare a speech, but the greatest is to have the honor of being a part of this exciting and important step in each of your lives. To borrow a biblical line that is appropriate for this season, I come bearing good news. This happens to be a very good time to be entering the workforce for several reasons. One of the reasons is demographics. You're entering the workforce at a time when many of Wisconsin's baby boomers are finally starting to retire. According to the Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development, between now and the year 2022, or the next eight years, there will be 760,000 total job openings. 190,000 of those will be brand new jobs, the other 570,000 replacement jobs. Interesting to note, there, the number of new jobs would be 40,000 higher if the state's labor force was bigger. In a sense, you can say we're going to have more jobs than people to fill them. So I guess you have a choice. You can either tell your Illinois and Minnesota friends to move to Wisconsin, or you can make lots of babies. <laughs> Traditionally, workers have chased jobs. We're now in an era when business is chasing talent. But there's a catch. There's always a catch, right? Business is demanding a higher caliber of employee, an employee that has critical skills in thinking, problem solving, and communicating. Not to mention technical skills like computer literacy. That's one of the reasons job growth is constrained by 40,000 jobs. Today's employer is not going to hire just anyone, but only those who can help that company compete to be world class. So I have to rephrase my remarks you need to go out and make smart babies. <laughs> what I'm talking about is a marked change in business culture. Businesses understand that not only do they compete against the company up the street, but literally against businesses around the world. Business leaders are also more aware than ever before that their main edge against the competition is a top-notch workforce. That leads to the second part of my good news. Businesses are working very hard to get the highest quality employees and then keep them happy so they will stick around. After all, a happy employee is a productive employee. Business has historically focused on products and processes. Programs like Lean and Six Sigma have made great strides in quality over the last 40 years. The new emphasis is on the human element. That is to say, recognizing the importance of the people who make up an organization. One of the outgrowths of this trend is a field called emotional intelligence, which helps employees recognize their emotions and use them appropriately to get along with their colleagues, especially those so-called difficult people. One might say the goal is to be good company to the people in your company. More recently, another concept has come along that focus, focuses on the human aspect in business. It is a concept called conscious business and is spelled out in a book of the same name by Dr. Fred Kaufman, former professor of intelligence at MIT. The book has received rave reviews in the business community, including from the likes of Sheryl Sandberg, chief operating officer of Facebook, who says, it is a book everyone should read. So how is conscious business important to you? Because if, as Ms. Sandberg indicates, being a conscious business is important to success these days, then those businesses are going to be looking to hire conscious employees. 
Tonight I'm going to give you a brief description of what it means to be a conscious employee. What's more, I'm going to introduce you to two of them that are here with us tonight. My promise to you is that being a conscious employee will not only help you find a job, but more importantly, will help you enjoy your life no matter where you end up working. I would like to think of Butter Buds as a conscious business. Respect for each individual on our team is written into the guiding principles of our strategic plan and is taken seriously. We may have been a bit ahead of the curve. Starting 30 years ago, my father stressed the importance of honoring each staff member. At this time of year, he would personally shop for a Christmas gift for each employee and invite us to his house for a Christmas party. He had a rule that every new employee, no matter what their position, be officially introduced to every other employee. A small gesture, yet it spoke volumes. These days at Butterbuds, it's more formalized, but the roots of that attitude date back to my father. I'm very proud of the fact that Butterbuds recently passed what's called a social responsibility audit with flying colors. In fact, the auditor said it was the best performance he's seen. He especially praised us for helping employees feel valued. So let's take a closer look at what we mean by conscious business and conscious employees. According to Dr. Kaufman, conscious employees have certain characteristics. They are, one, unconditional responsibility, two, essential integrity, and three, humility. So number one, unconscious, oh, sorry, unconditional responsibility. Let's first look at what it is not. The person who does not practice unconditional responsibility is nicknamed the victim. With the victims, problems that occur are never his fault. Problems are due to things out of her control. The victim believes he is unfairly treated by everyone. Managers don't give direction, colleagues don't give support, customers are too demanding, and the IT department is no help at all. The poor IT department always gets the shaft. The tendency to be a victim is learned at an early age. My youngest are 15 years old, and it wasn't that long ago, like maybe last month, I heard one of them say, well, I hit him because he laughed at me. It's as if he had absolutely no choice, like he was some kind of automaton. This is not a conscious response. The victim is not a conscious employee. Yet there is something tempting about being the victim because it deflects criticism and possible consequences for poor choices. But here's the problem. The victim is ultimately powerless. If he or she takes no responsibility for the problem, the victim can do nothing to help create a solution. The victim is standing on the sidelines. They are the armchair quarterback, quick to criticize. They say they want to captain their ship until a storm comes along when they say, I'm out of here. The opposite of the victim is the contributor. The contributor is a conscious employee that is willing to acknowledge his or her contribution to a challenging situation. She fully acknowledges her responsibility, i.e., her ability to respond to a situation. She is the captain of her ship even when things go badly. <clears throat> and yes, things will always go badly even in the best run organizations. The contributor is willing to say, I screwed up, and now I'm ready to help fix it. Doesn't this sound great? Doesn't it just feel right to be this way? But, of course, there's a catch. It comes at a price, and the price is called accountability. The contributor is willing, indeed expects, to be held accountable for his or her actions. At some places, however, at those not so conscious businesses, and there are a few of them out there, this can be a problem. Those not so conscious businesses foster a culture of victimhood because even the top brass is not willing to be held accountable. The contributor could be seen as a troublemaker at that kind of company. If you find yourself working for this type of company, my advice is to find a different place to work. Remember, there's going to be more jobs than people to fill them. Because while it's really important to support yourself and your family and pay the rent and all of that important stuff, it is really, really important to be able to look yourself in the mirror and say, 
I choose to be responsible, accountable, and I am not compromising myself for a job. Which leads us to the next element required to be a conscious employee, and that is essential integrity. Again, let's start with a not-so-conscious employee, one lacking in integrity. For this employee, it's all about them and their good friend, immediate gratification. This person is willing to step on others to get her way. For him, winning is everything, even if it means bending the rules. He or she is guided by greed, jealousy, fear, and the need to possess. Their goal is to get as much as possible while giving as little as possible. On the flip side, a person operating from essential integrity knows there is more to work than getting ahead and making money. Integrity hinges on whether my behavior is consistent with my values. This is not easy because often it means doing something I would rather avoid. For example, one of my roles at ButterBuds is to encourage teamwork. Sometimes that means I have to have a difficult conversation with people about their behavior. Part of me would rather avoid that, but then my actions would not align with my values. I try to be in integrity. I try to set the example of the conscious manager. Here's another example. There are times when I was tempted to call President Albrecht and give him some excuse why I couldn't write this speech. My dog ate my laptop? No, I don't think that would have worked. Part of me wanted to get out of doing the work, but the bigger part of me wanted to stick with my commitment. I wanted to be in integrity. Being in integrity, rather than just giving lip service to it, comes down to one thing, discipline. It takes discipline for me to schedule that meeting to have the difficult conversation or to finish writing a speech. It took discipline for you over the course of your studies here to stay at your desk with your nose in a book or in the lab working on a project rather than going out with a friend. You chose to be in integrity. Discipline is the force required to overcome our tendency toward instant gratification. At both the personal and organizational level, discipline and delayed gratification lead to practicing essential integrity. Now we tend to focus on success more than integrity, but if we ask ourselves why we want success, we usually find some deeper reasons such as, I want to provide for my family. When we ask ourselves why we want to provide for our family, there's another deeper reason. It always ends up with things like, I want happiness. I want fulfillment. I want peace of mind. After looking closely, we see these are our true goals, not success as we usually think of it. So why not start with the values of happiness, fulfillment, peace of mind, etc.? Ask yourself, is the gratification that comes from material wealth and having more possessions the highest reward that life can offer? At the end of the day, the most important thing is to be able to look in the mirror and be proud of the person looking back at you. The third attribute in Dr. Kaufman's lineup is humility. I'm reminded of the story of the two clergymen arguing over, who, uh, over how to do God's work. And finally, after much debate in a spirit of conciliation, one of the ministers said to the other, look, let's not argue about it. You do God's work your way, I'll do it his way. This man of God was not showing much humility. We see these not-so-humble people in the workplace. They are the know-it-alls. Their perspective is the only valid perspective. They are not willing or able to honor the opinions of others. Those who disagree must be wrong. Their goal is to get everyone else to surrender to their ideas. Their personality is brittle, easily shattered if forced to be, admit to being wrong. Because of our culture and personal circumstances, we tend to see things a certain way and reject other ways of seeing them. We associate with certain people and not others. We form cliques and think in terms of us versus them. This is normal, but it is not conscious. When I am conscious, I act with humility, which means I understand that others have a different reality than I do. There isn't one truth or right way of looking at something. When I act with humility, I recognize and embrace the other's view of reality. Humility doesn't mean giving in. Instead, it leads to finding a mutual approach to moving things forward. 
When I see that my point of view is just one of many, I stop taking myself so seriously. I lose the smug certainty that my ideas are obviously the best ones. Practicing humility protects me from conceit and opens me up to the contribution of others. So those are the big three, responsibility, integrity, and humility, with a dash of accountability and discipline thrown in to hold them all together. Certainly not new concepts, and yet there is a new appre appreciation for these age-old qualities in today's business. I know it sounds like a high bar to reach, but I know you can do it because I have seen others do it. In fact, I have two people with me here tonight that exemplify what I've been talking about, and I would like to introduce you to them. The first is Rich Kaufman. Rich has been working at Butterbuds for 20 years. Rich has an associate degree in applied science from Community College of the Air Force and started working for us in our customer service department. Pretty soon, Rich made the mistake of letting on that he was good at computers and soon was in charge of IT. Along the way, Rich took charge of the warehouse and logistics as well, and these days oversees all three departments, supervising 14 people. The other conscious employee with me here tonight is Jan Schmaus. Jan has been at Butterbuds 13 years, starting in our customer service food service department, then becoming head of all customer service, and eventually working her way up to director of human resources. Jan has numerous continuing education credits from Gateway Technical College. Both Rich and Jan exemplify the traits I've been talking about. They are willing to take responsibility for their actions, they are more interested in supporting others than in getting ahead, and they value and encourage the perspective offered by everyone on the team. Those attributes, along with their intelligence, creativity, and strong work ethic, make Rich and Jan essential to our success. Rich and Jan, please stand to be recognized for being excellent examples of the conscious employee. And to the class of 2014, best wishes for a very happy life. Wow, I tell you, I'm so glad that you didn't call and cancel out of your pre spe pre speech tonight because uh, we had a chance to listen to his last lecture, learn about uh, smart and conscious people, and saw a live demonstration of what leadership is all about. So I just want to also welcome Rich and Jan, and what a great acknowledgement by Tom for ensuring that the values of Butterbuds is lived not only in the corporate world, but uh, throughout the civic responsibilities as well. So Tom, thank you again on behalf of Gateway Technical College. It, uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce to you our class speaker. It's tradition here at Gateway that we select a representative from your graduating class to address you. Please welcome Joquita Hughes. And as she comes forward, let me introduce her a little bit to you. Joquita is a graduating tonight in human services program. She has also earned certificates in AODA, gerontology, and aspects of disabilities, and is currently working on a certificate in child welfare. Joquita is the Racine Campus District Star Ambassador. As a global scholar, Joquita will be traveling to Belize for a service learning project at the end of December. She is the district treasurer of the student government and a member of various clubs on campus. While attending Gateway, Joquita has worked in the Learning Success Center and volunteered at many campus activities. She has also volunteered in the human services projects within our community. I don't know what we're gonna do when she graduates from Gateway Technical <laughs> College. This fall of 2015, she'll be pursuing her bachelor's degree in social work and psychology. Her goal is to become an advocate for people with disabilities. Please welcome Joaquita Hughes. You could have kept the applause going while I had that long walk. <laughs> No, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good evening. It is truly my honor to represent the graduating students tonight. The speech I'm about to give was one of the hardest tasks I've ever had. It's not just because I immediately sweat when I hear the word speech or get emotional and tend to cry at events like these. 
I promise I'll try to do my best not to. <laughs> or even the fact that I procrastinate to do hard assignments, like writing this huge speech right before the night it was due. <laughs> It was because I made, it made me reflect on my time at Gateway, which I'm sure most of us have done since applying for graduation. When I was asked to speak, I immediately thought back to my first semester, and I had to give my first presentation. I called my mom panicking, and she told me, think of it as practice. You may have to speak in front of a big group one day. Well, mom, I see you just getting here. <laughs> I think this is one of those times. <laughs> Then I realized all of us have been in the same situation where we were unsure and nervous. So bear with me as I give one of my final presentations as a student at Gateway. My fellow graduates, we did it. Give yourselves a round of applause. We passed our exams, we wrote long papers, and even survived group projects. We traveled to class in the lovely Wisconsin snow, we made new friends, joined clubs, volunteered at events, and networked with a lot of people. Shout out to Mary and Leo, the graduating tonight. <laughs> we even saw Rudy the Red Hawk become our mascot. There were barriers that slowed us down, but that didn't stop us. We all allowed ourselves to persevere and finish what we started. Look at us now. We're all wearing these beautiful cap and gowns. We solidified our place in Gateway Technical College's history. We are graduates. This is a remarkable accomplishment that we will always have to look back on. To our family and friends, although you are not donning caps and gowns, we acknowledge that this moment is also for you. Whew, okay. <laughs> Get it? Okay. You have been here with us since the beginning, and it's only fitting that you be here at the end to help us celebrate our success. Your love and support is appreciated and will always be remembered. On behalf of the graduates, I say thank you for believing in us, even when we may not have believed in ourselves. Now give yourselves a pat on the back. And for our children, children who are our future leaders, you are here to witness firsthand what success is all about. It's about recognizing opportunities for a brighter future and not being afraid of what may come. So I say to each of you, never give up on your dreams. Every one of us sitting before you began this journey with a dream that one day we would reach this milestone. Your love, support, and cooperation <laughs> helped us make these dreams a reality. And on today, we hope that you are able to see that hard work, determination, and persistence pays off that in the future, we will be given the opportunity to return the favor and watch on as you walk across the stage to receive your diplomas. To the faculty and staff and community members, thank you for being in attendance tonight. You are more than just our educators. You have become our mentors, advocates, and a great resource for tools to help us succeed. Thank you for providing conferences, workshops, and other events that not only prepared us to be quality workers, but to be great leaders as well. And know as we leave Gateway, we are taking the lessons and experiences you've shared with us. For example, if Gina Stobie is here tonight, I wrote this down so it did happen. <laughs> now back to the graduates. Celebrate this accomplishment. We all have different reasons for choosing Gateway, but in the end, we can all say that Gateway cares about us and our future. Keep that tradition going. Tell your family and friends about Gateway and let them know that they can be a part of this family as well. So with that, I said to you, we're not done yet. Keep that passion that you have and further your education. You may already be working in your field of study or contemplating on what to do next. Whatever career path you take, make, make a commitment to seek new challenges to keep learning. Every day presents an opportunity to expand our knowledge and to better ourselves. And our only limits will be the ones that we place on ourselves. Finally, I encourage you to invest in a community that has invested in you and your future. As a Gateway Technical College graduate, you are a part of a family that believes that everyone can do something to make this world a better place and has a track record of doing their part. It is your charge, each of us, to help Gateway continue this legacy. 
give back. I sincerely thank you for your time. It has been an honor and a humbling experience to stand before you tonight. You have my gratitude and well wishes on all of your future goals. Now I'll sit down because I'm ready to walk across the stage. And hopefully by this point of the speech, I haven't cried. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Chiquita. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Zena Haywood, Gateway Executive Vice President and Provost. Good evening. First, let me say congratulations to all of the graduates. And as the Chief Academic Officer, it is my pleasure to recognize academic achievement this evening. Graduates who are members of the National Honor Fraternity Phi Theta Kappa are wearing gold tassels. Graduates with gold honor cords have achieved the President's Honor Award for Scholastic Achievement with a grade point average of 3.9 to 4.0 in their program requirements. Graduates wearing white honor cords have achieved the Honor Award for achieving a grade point average of 3.75 to 3.89 in their program requirements. Will all three groups of honor graduates please stand and be recognized for your outstanding academic performance. Thank you, you may be seated. In addition, Gateway Technical College has a focus on the skills that graduates need in a global society. Our Gateway Global Scholars Program provides an international education experience. Gateway's graduating global scholars are recognized tonight by their Gateway Global Scholars stoles. Please stand as I call your name. Sarah Chrisman, Costa Rica and Nicaragua. Chiquita Hughes, Belize. Crystal Mazula, Belize. Christopher Uren, France and Germany. And Caitlin Vogel, Belize. Thank you, you may be seated. We would also like to recognize the students who are members of the National Society of Leadership and Success, or Sigma Alpha Pi, which is a worldwide organization for achievement and leadership education. Members are invited to participate and must complete a rigorous training program which focuses on exploring one's challenges, recognizing one's strengths, and setting up a personal plan to move forward. Would the graduates who are members of Sigma Alpha Pi please stand to be recognized. Thank you. Last, but certainly not least, we would like to recognize our graduates who have the distinction of serving our country in the United States Armed Forces. Will the graduates wearing red, white, and blue honor cords please stand and be recognized for your distinguished service. Congratulations to all of our special honor graduates tonight. Thank you, Zena, and let me add my congratulations to all our honor graduates tonight as well. And now is the moment that you've all been waiting for, the conferring of the degrees and diplomas. On behalf of the Wisconsin Technical College System and the Gateway Board of Trustees, I acknowledge the candidates for diploma and degrees. Will the division representatives please present the candidates for their degrees? Will the business division please stand? I, Linda McGee, representing the business faculty, present the candidates for degrees and diplomas in the business division. Will the candidates please come forward? 
Candidates, as you're making your way towards the stage, you all have a little card with your name on it. We will do our best to make sure that we pronounce your name properly. This is your moment. You've earned it. You've worked very hard for it. If for any reason we mispronounce your name, please correct us and we will do it again. We want to make sure you enjoy your moment and your friends and family enjoy your moment as well. Now presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree accounting, Maria R. Berea. Maria D. Cosio. <laughs> Stephanie E. Gruco. Karen Gutierrez. Tanya L. Hopper. Megan K. Light. Jolotzin Perez. Ruth C. Tedron. Michael R. Zurbano. Now presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree administrative professional, Joan M. Graham. Tanya K. Hawes. Jacqueline S. Lee. Presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Business Management, Crystal Bullard. Tony T. Martin, Sr. Giovanna Maldonado Avia. Katie E. Lugo. <laughs> Renee N. Lynn. <laughs> Carolyn Y. Hoy. <laughs> Larissa M. High. Leonardo J. Hibara. Mary J. Gonzalez. Sabrina L. Ferlani. David T. Ellis. Daniana A. Dunn. Zachary S. Devine. Amanda S. Demichi. Cassie P. Cordero. Alicia Serdas. Angela J. Ratkowski. <laughs> Jamie M. Schmeling. <laughs> Natalie A. Cerna. <laughs> Marna L. Skinner. <laughs> Cheryl L. Tate. Teresa A. Wade. Okay. 
Tanisha K. Williams. Now presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Graphic Communications, Amanda L. Puckett. Christopher J. Uran. Now presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Information Technology, Web Developer Administrator, Susan R. Uzenez. Glenn J. Schemenauer. <laughs> Presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Information Technology Computer Support Specialist, Elise N. Taylor. <laughs> Presenting the candidate for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Information Technology Network Specialist, Ian J. Forbes. Presenting the candidate for the Technical Diploma Office Assistant, Mary Benitez. <laughs> Will the Health Occupations Division please stand? Good evening. I, Dr. Susan Voss Herman, representing Health Occupations faculty, uh, present the candidates for degrees and diplomas in the Health Occupations divisions. Will the candidates please come forward? Presenting the candidates for the Technical Diploma Health Unit Coordinator, Tamara L. Gamble. Mary J. Haley. Maria A. Juarez. Cynthia R. McDuffie. Destiny N. Strange. <laughs> Brianna E. Wright. <laughs> now presenting the candidates for the Technical Diploma Medical Assistant, Gloria D. Lewis. <laughs> Daisy Miranda Nava. Shannon M. Smith. <laughs> Carrie A. Venegas. <laughs> now presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree in nursing, Teresa E. Andresen. Sarah Brooke Christman. <laughs> Janie L. Cornell. <laughs> Gillian J. Counts. <laughs> Rhiannon L. Engelbrecht. Britton L. Gitzloff. Janet. Janet M. Johnson.
Patrice A. Jones. Nicole L. Coons. Crystal R. Missoula. Betsy N. Ramirez. Jolene A. Wagner. Now presenting the candidates for the Technical Diploma of Practical Nursing, Jessup N. Castaneda. Cassie C. Christopher Hill. Jolene M. Civickel. Nicole M. Denny. Kimberly R. Diamante. Michelle G. Fojas. Rosa Maria E. Garcia. Heather T. Harrington. Rosetta Hughes. Lisa M. Johnson. Brianna D. King. Jerry L. Mata. Christina M. Nelson. Amanda L. Obernberger. Victoria R. Powell. Sierra N. Reddy. Thiel. Lou A. Thiel. Julie E. Towery. Will the Manufacturing and Engineering Division please stand? I, Pat Hoppy, are representing the manufacturing and are, are representing the manufacturing and engineering faculty and present the candidates for degrees and diplomas in the manufacturing and engineering division. Will the candidates please come forward? Presenting the candidate for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Automotive Technology, Christopher S. Smith. <laughs> Presenting the candidate for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Biomedical Engineering Technology, Brent A. Barthels. <laughs> Brent, is also, Brent is also graduating from the Sustainable Energy System program. James D. Svinland. Now presenting the candidates for the Technical Diploma CNC Production Technician, Antonio L. Bonner. Rebecca C. Foreman. Cynthia L. Kimura. Ian C. King. Now presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Civil Engineering Technology, Freshwater Resources, Randy R. Quilling. Thank you. Thank you. 
Justin. Justin J. Robinson. Presenting the candidates for the Technical Diploma Facilities Maintenance, Kyle D. Arb. Brian P. Van Dyke. Presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Horticulture Greenhouse and Floral, Kenneth M. Bidron. Presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Industrial Mechanical Technician, William P. Malman. Sandra A. Pavlak. Sandra's also, Sandra is also graduating from the Welding Maintenance and Fabrication Program. Now presenting the candidates for the Technical Diploma Advanced Welding, Gregory Hayes. Cole L. Sorg. Who is also graduating in welding maintenance and fabrication. Aaron J. Strackey. Now presenting the candidates for the technical diploma welding, maintenance, and fabrication, Ross T. Gerhardt. Ethan Plants. Will the Service Occupations Division please stand? I, Linda McGee, representing the Service Occupations faculty, present the candidates for degrees and diplomas in the Service Occupations Division. Will the candidates please come forward? Presenting the candidates for the Technical Diploma Barber Technologist, Tyler A. Bosch. <laughs> Stephen P. Lohner. <laughs> Presenting the candidates for the Technical Diploma Barber Cosmetologist, Karina Cataldo. Alyssa R. Kotletsky. Sandra L. Lira. Stephanie M. Wolyak. Now presenting the candidates for the Technical Diploma Cosmetology, Mary J. Alber. Lizette. Lizette A. Briggs. <laughs> Jessica Contreras. <laughs> Stephanie N. Johnson. Emily J. Cam. Brittany N. Miller. Diana E. Murgia. Rachel L. Riley. Jakia V. Snow. Now presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Criminal Justice Law Enforcement, 
Roshina A. Aki. I'm sorry? S. S. Aki. My apologies. <laughs> Barbara D. Cowles. <laughs> Zenya J. Green. <laughs> Tanya L. Greisheimer. Brittany N. Kalinowski. Carly M. Logterman. Brunel A. Neighbors. Kyle J. Pembroke. Lakeisha M. Person. Ryan S. Quilling. Shannon L. Quilling. Juan A. Rocha Jr. Lindsay R. Seifert. Anna M. Thomas. Kristen M. Vasquez. Now presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Culinary Arts, Justin M. Becky. Suzanne L. Castaneda. <laughs> if you miss it, they're carrying kale. I think that's very funny. Is it Eisen? Robin M. Eisen. That's funny. Christy Leto. Sean A. Ronkowski. <laughs> now presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Early Childhood Education, Natasha M. Allen. <laughs> Carrie A. Kinzer. Rebecca L. Larson. Caitlin E. Vogel. Presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Fire Protection Technician, Firefighter James L. Davis. Firefighter Zachary M. Faulkner. Firefighter Russell L. Rathke. Firefighter Patrick M. Stevens. Presenting the candidate for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Hotel Hospitality Management, Claudia L. Gadikis. Presenting the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degree, Human Services Associate, Marcy R. Fitzgibbon. <laughs> Kelly S. Garnett. Mariah C. Gomez. Lakita M. Gordon. Yeah. 
Cassandra D. Gray Carter. Jaquita L. Hughes. Woo! Nicholas S. Jensen. No no Tiffany A. Knotek. Shaquilla N. Kyles. Tammy E. Madden. Mary F. Paredes. Jeremy A. Sims. Jordan J. Sweeteye. <laughs> President Albrecht, all of the candidates have been introduced. I thought, I thought I saw some pretty big smiles when we walked into this room, but I'm telling you what, those were the best smiles walking across the stage I have ever seen at a Gateway graduation. So one more round of applause for all of our grads. Great job. Well, this has sure been an exciting evening. Graduates, I admire your accomplishments and wish you very much success in your future. Now, if you'll stand with me, please stand. On behalf of the State of Wisconsin and the Gateway Technical College Board of Trustees, I confer the appropriate recognition for your work at Gateway Technical College. You may now move your symbolic tassel on your mortarboard from the right to the left. Congratulations, graduates! I, Ginger Carraway, hereby close the commencement exercises for Gateway Technical College.